the world must have seemed a far more mysterious and unpredictable place 2,000 years ago. Travellers' tales were eagerly listened to and retold by the folks at home, and each repetition added some new twist or elaboration. Seafaring exploits especially would have been embellished with more than a little poetic license. Stranger, darker things did happen at sea in far-off times because the seas and oceans were largely uncharted, and who was there to dispute what lay beyond them, or in their impenetrable depths? Among the many hazards said to have been faced by Odysseus on his epic sea voyage were Scylla and Charybdis, immortal and irresistible beings who lurked menacingly on either side of a narrow passage of water that the Greek hero had to negotiate in order to continue his journey. Scylla was an impressive 12 feet long, boasted six snaking heads and had loins girt with the heads of baying dogs. Charybdis on the other hand spent most of its time skulking under a fig tree on the opposite shore. Three times a day it would stir itself to gulp down most of the waters of the passage and then belch them out in a bloody-minded effort to make life just about as difficult as possible for any hapless seafarers. It's easy for us to appreciate now that Homer's tale of these two creatures was just an imaginative expression of the dangers facing Greek mariners when they first set out into the unknown waters of the western Mediterranean. Scylla and Charybdis were the Hellenic counterparts of the sea monsters that some medieval writers believed awaited those who ventured too far across the Atlantic. But as it happens, Charybdis is real, if a lot less terrifying than legend painted it. The factual Charybdis is alive and well and living almost opposite the entrance to the harbour of Messina in Sicily, in the strait between Sicily and the peninsula body of Italy. Its modern name is the Garofalo, and at times it can pose a threat even to modern shipping, but it's certainly not the monstrous whirlpool of legend. In fact, it isn't actually a whirlpool at all, because there's no circular motion of the water. The Garofalo forms when strong winds blow across the strait in the opposite direction to the flow of the tide. This results in a violent broken swell or unusually choppy seas which can be rough enough to overturn small vessels and create a significant navigation hazard for larger ones. Similar but more dangerous is the Maelstrom off the coast of Norway. Norse legends make frequent reference to it, and both Jules Verne and Edgar Allan Poe featured it in their fictional adventures. Poe, in his short story Descent into the Maelstrom, goes overboard in more ways than one. The current acquired a monstrous velocity. The vast bed of the water seamed and scarred into a thousand conflicting channels, burst suddenly into frenzied convulsions gyrating in gigantic and innumerable vortices, and all whirling and plunging on to the eastward with a rapidity water never elsewhere assumes except in precipitous descents. In a few minutes, the gyratory motions seemed to form the germ of another more vast, Suddenly this assumed a distinct and broad belt of gleaming spray, but no particle of this slipped into the mouth of the terrible funnel, whose interior, as far as the eye could see, was a smooth, shining and jet-black wall of water. Taking on the role of a modern-day Homer, Poe plays on our dread of the irresistible vortex sucking down everything, whales, men and ships alike to their watery doom. In our minds, Maelstrom and Giant Whirlpool become one, synonymous with inescapable destruction and despair. In recent times, astronomers have found such objects in the depths of space in the form of black holes, the centres of whirlpools of matter swirling round and round, before finally disappearing over the edge of a precipitous gravitational well. However, the Maelstrom, like the real Charybdis, isn't a true whirlpool, though its effects can be deadly enough. Located at latitude 67 degrees 48 minutes north and longitude 12 degrees 50 minutes east, the Maelstrom occurs between two of the Lofoten Islands, Moskun in the south and Moskun in the north. 
Essentially, it's a powerful tidal current about five miles wide, flowing along a deep marine channel between the open sea on the west and Vestfjorden on the Norwegian coast to the east. The danger to ships is greatest when the tides change because at these times the current can reach a speed of seven miles an hour, added to which is the problem of strong, unpredictable local winds. Genuine whirlpools do exist at sea, but not nearly on the scale some writers have suggested. Among them is Corryvrecken, or Brecken's Cauldron, off the west coast of Scotland between the islands of Jura and Scarborough. Its cause? Strong tides thrown into a vortex by their passage over a pyramidal rock which rises from a depth of 100 fathoms to within just 15 feet of the surface. Not surprisingly, several Celtic tales of magic and mystery are woven around it. <laughs>